Welcome to Oman Pavilion at Expo Dubai 2020. This is the Oman Pavilion and the theme is the frankincense tree and I'll show you a bit more of it. The exterior of the building, as you can see, there's some wood fins and these are 100% sustainable and they're from Italy. They create a sh like a protective type of shadow, just like how the tree, uh, how the tree is protecting life. That's it. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of them all the way around the pavilion. Yes, and they're all around the pavilion to symbolize exactly that of you know protecting the life and how they how uh, Oman is also preserving and protecting the frankincense tree and how it's also protected us all these years and into civilization as well we have at least uh, 10 frankincense trees come along as you can see these are the frankincense trees and they were rescued in 2013 they're eight to ten. They're thirty years old. Stop. We have to go around because this. Okay, we can go over. That means it's full inside. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Are we, you let me know when you're resuming. Oh, I can. <laughs> okay, one second. One second. One second. Over here we have the frankincense sanitizer. All the guests are, are allowed and are able to use a frankincense sanitizer before they enter the pavilion. As we get closer to the entrance, we have a screen that shows the, uh, the location of the uh, Oman and uh, the population and also our majesty. Welcome. On the, on the walls, we have an image, a symbolism of the bark. It symbolizes the bark of the tree. It's created by fiber. It's not real. And as you come closer, you are, you are welcomed by the mother tree, a replica of the mother tree. As you come closer to the mother tree, it welcomes you with beauty and emotions because this is a tree that goes at least 7,000 years back and it's located in, the, in Salala, the Far, and it has been there through different types of cultures um, from ancient Egyptian time to uh, early Christianity and also uh, in ancient Chinese time. And all these periods, they use the frankincense for different means from mummification rituals to prayer and to medicine. Uh, okay. Can you explain a bit more what's special about the frankincense tree? Okay, okay, that was me giving you yeah. the uh, how it's connected, yeah. connecting minds because it's connected through. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with with the three um, examples that I gave of the three cultures, this is to show you how it's connecting minds. The tree, uh, the frankincense grows on the bark of the tree. As you can see, it has a gooey type of texture. The frankincense is a raisin, and it grows only on the bark and a bit of the, of the stems, okay? The tree is also very medicinal. It has health benefits. It's good for the immune system, for skin, and for hair, and for nails. Uh, what, what's happened with this uh, boat right there? Oh. Okay, they just brought this one in. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. This... Uh, let me just get okay. proper information for that. Moza. Yes. This is... Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's okay. just decor. Okay, no problem. Let's uh, continue. The design is a pavilion. Ah, the only, yeah, what I was going to tell you is uh, we could talk about the image but not this. This was okay. brought in for National Day. Okay. Okay. So, so on the image there? On this image, you see it says uh, experience a nation. You have at least a theme and the style of what Oman represents. We don't only just have uh, the desert, we also have mountains and we have greenery spaces. And this is what combines everything together as a nation. Okay. As we go to the, sec to the first floor, yeah. As we go to the first floor, we're going to be approaching the sustainability floor. And in this floor, 
we are going to experience the different projects that are taking place that encourage sustainability and are eco-friendly to the environment. So, so these projections on the walls are made uh, by Omani yeah. uh, okay. designers? Yeah. Would you lo like me to mention yeah. that? As you're coming up the stairs, everything that you see has been created by Omani, the Omani youth, including the images that you see on the wall with the projector. Right. Right, before we go in, yeah. there are a couple of projects. You want me to talk about all of them? Some of summary? that you want. A few. The one you want, yeah. Welcome to Zone B, and this is the forest of sustainability and in here we are going to be welcomed by baby frankincense look look-alike uh, trees and they're flat screens with projectors at the bottom and each screen is showing you the projects that are taking place in Oman that are all sustainable and eco-friendly to the country and to, to the nation. So how much uh, renewable energy is happening? I see, I see wind power is there solar power? There must yeah, be, right? Is, a lot is, of solar power? Yeah, but this is a, the only information we have is that it's a wind power plant. plant. So okay. 50 MW. Okay. okay. And here we have, uh, we have uh, um, Ecological Utopia. It's, an, it's called Al Ifran City. And these architects are trying to create, these architects are trying to create um, a sustainable city for for the lo location by building environmental sustainable urban city and uh, one of my favorites one of my favorites is the date the palm date pro plantation project where they're using drones to plant palm trees wow. yes so the drones just uh, drop these yes. dates in the in the, from the air air from the air yeah, and, and just then they pollinate Wow. Then they let like the bees do the work and you know. Okay. Do you want to cover one more? Yeah, let's go around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, or you so, want to do all? Yeah, as, as if. Uh, let's do. Maybe we'll yeah. just do three more yeah. and the last one okay. is the, the country. Okay. The beauty of the country. Yeah. Okay. This next project is from a waste landfills to feeding stations for eagles in Alamrat in Oman. So they're trying to preserve the eagles and the birds of Oman as they're getting extinct. extinct. Yeah, the, the eagles are amazing in, in the nature yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. a very big pride for the for country, the, right? For the Middle East, yeah. yeah. Okay. Over here, we have um, cruise. We, come, we get to show you the rare le Arabian leopards, which are also very few and Oman has a sustainable wildlife, it's a conservation and you have foxes and leopards and all types of um, animals that are being kept safe and over here we have a fish farming it's uh, the fish farm where they're trying to use recycled fish waste and in that, in that way they help uh, the cat whatever is remaining from the waste the cat is able to eat that. Yeah, so um, it's also the whole pavilion is uh, architected by Omani yes, architects. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the conceptual design was designed by two young female Omanis. Okay, they just designed the conceptual design, and then there was another um, company that created the components, the materials. But each, each and every piece that you see was designed and created by Omanis. And the last one here is, uh, is images of the beautiful country and the four seasons that it has. This is all across the Sultanate of Oman. So, um, so it gets pretty hot in the, in the summer, but in the winter is very nice cool, to yeah. cool. It's chilly at night. And normally um, during, during summer, 
in Muscat and other areas it's hot, but in Salala it's very green and it has there's like rainfall, so it gets really cold. So as we are approaching the next zone, over here we have the beautiful National Orchestra. Oh, it's just starting. Okay, so this will take a few minutes. And um they'll be playing on this screen right here. Yeah, so the song yeah. that they're playing was inspired by the frankincense and was only created, should I say that again? Yeah. The song that the orchestra is playing was inspired and created for the expo and for the Oman Pavilion, and it's inspired by the frankincense. And as you can see, they're wearing their traditional um, attire and representing Oman in full. And the ceiling gives you a sense of uh, the bark of a tree and we call this the Colosseum. Uh, as an introduction at the Royal Opera House. Yeah, because that's where they, they normally play number one and we have the, the actual Royal Opera House and he's talking about how they're inspired by the frankincense tree. The song is inspired by the frankincense tree. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's get going. Let's get to it uh, just Later a minute on. when they start playing. Okay. And uh, around here, we see... Let me just yeah. wait for them to okay. reduce. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, it's going to start. So this is a traditional instrument. Yes. This is... Uh, traditional guitar. As we all know, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Our late majesty was a huge fan of classical music and a private orchestra. He had his own orchestra. So this is why we wanted to highlight one of the beautiful aspects of Oman, which is the orchestra as well. And as and you can see, they play music uh, from all over the world, or they play a lot of tr uh, traditional Omani music. No, also? no, no. They play traditional Omani music, but he, um, His Late Majesty used to enjoy traveling with them when it, it was necessary. Okay, so. And uh, opera is uh, amazing it's to beautiful. be in. The Royal Opera House is very beautiful. It's stunning. It's one of the greatest works of Oman and uh, we obviously had the first Royal Opera House in the whole of the GCC. Alright, let's have a look here. Now we are approaching Zone C which is the Frankincense Hall, the Crystal Hall and the uh, ceiling as you can see, it has images, I mean, it has shapes of the frankincense, not entirely, but it's, uh, it symbolizes the, fr the frankincense, and each screen shows you more projects that have won awards that are also sustainable and eco-friendly. For example, this one is about a rare earth element that Dr. Fatma has created for beauty and for all other types of products. That's uh, crucial if this could be developed in, uh, in a massive way that could uh, help the environment a yeah. lot. Yeah. Right, let's, let's go around. I'll go straight to that one. Yeah. Okay. Over here, we get uh, an idea and we get to show everyone how the frankincense is used, not just for burning uh, purposes, not for spiritual purposes, but it can be used in art as well. And they use it as a varnish for the canvas and also for perfumed um, experiences. Okay. okay, let's go around. Yeah. Okay, so we are approaching uh, Zone D, which is the route to the trade tunnel. And this area is very um, special to the country because it's a world heritage, uh, it's in the world heritage list under UNESCO. And this is where, this is where the first trading began of the frankincense. Gosh. 
So uh, it's over thousands of years yeah, that these have been used. It's very old. This is exactly where they started trading, and they've preserved it all these years. And as we're, this is Zone D, and this is about logistics, and their plan on. Um, I mean, Oman is known for having the, the fastest uh, logistics hub. So this is a shuttle that, w that is trying to be created where they, it's a moving shuttle that can deliver and um, transport people. It's a slow moving shuttle. And also they're creating uh, delivery trucks, that self-driving trucks that are sustainable and safe for delivery as well. And there might be some partnerships with all kinds of companies in the world, exactly. right? It could be Tesla potentially yeah, or... Yeah. And this is also by a governmental a company called ASIAD. And it's very famous for its beautiful work that it's done. And as we're approaching the next zone, which is logistics still, and this is also shows you how ASEAN has boomed the connectivity towards the world of trading and how they have high tech, um, high-tech means of, of uh, information to share underwater. Because uh, uh, in Oman you have important ports. Exactly, we have the port because we're on the coast. So this makes it easy for transportation, for logistics, for trade in all the parts of, um, of the Gulf and also outside. And it's also one of the fastest logistics. Sorry? Here comes the Danish boat, the mask. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. that's Danish. Nice. I had yeah. no idea. All right. Okay. And it shows, it also gives you an idea of how we have dolphins. We have 20 different species of whales and dolphins in Oman. It's also important to keep the dolphins yeah. and not fish them. Yeah, no, no. And to have uh, what's it called rules for the fish fishermen. Exactly. That they don't use the nets that capture they, them yeah, and stuff. Yeah, they don't. Right. They really preserve the, um, the dolphins and the whales a lot because it also attracts tourist, tourism in uh, all kinds of ways. Yeah. As you can see, it has access to 2 billion consumers. All right. Thank you. Uh, Laura, the phones, the phone in the crystal side is, is recording. The phone here is out. Which phone? Uh, here. Sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told Muhammad to check his head now. Okay, now... What did you say? Uh, maybe we can cut and let's start from here. Okay, all right. Okay. As we're approaching now, which is the last floor, Zone E is the future of Oman and also the future of frankincense. On the walls, we have images of the country from all parts of the country, and these were taken just for expo. So we get an idea of how the country looks from the mosques to the animals, to the sunsets, to the trees, and how cold it gets in the mountains. Sometimes we experience some snow. How, how often do you get the snow? Just during periods of January. when it's, Yeah, just at the tip of the, of the mountains when it's very cold. It's a very big pavilion actually, right? Is it? Yeah, oh, this is uh, several floors. floors. Just two floors. It's big. It looks, it's bigger inside than it looks outside. Exactly, that's, uh, that's the beauty of the design actually. Yeah. They designed it in, uh, in the sense that when you enter, all you have to do is you keep going around and you exit at the last floor. So welcome to the future of Oman. As you enter the space, you're welcomed by screens and images of each and every one that participated in creating this beautiful pavilion. We have the two designers, the tech team, the engineers, uh, multimedia de developers. So that's one of the young designers that design the conceptual design. Okay. Uh, this, is, um, this pavilion is a multi-year project, right? It takes a lot of dedication, a lot of work from yes, a lot of people. It did. it did. And obviously with how COVID came through, it was stopped for a bit, but they completed it. 
and you're welcomed by this robotic farm that will be here for the next six months and we're going to be planting um, seeds of the frankincense in order to see how long it will take to grow without the light outside, without sunlight, but with the um, UV lights and there's water coming from underneath. There's tubes that are connected from the bottom and they will pump the water up. And this is a way to also experiment on how, um, if there's a future in Mars, how they can take the robotic farm into the spaceship for the astronauts to experience and also to be able to plant it in Mars. As we know that frankincense is very beneficial to the health, it, um, it's good for the immune system, it destroys uh, bacteria, pathogens, fungi, viruses. And the space that you're in is also a space to give the visitors uh, a sense of relaxation. These are images of the tree from the from the seeds, this is the seeds, and all the way to the stems, the branches, and the leaves, and until the last result, which is the, the uh, raisin, it's a gooey texture type, and that is the outcome. So the whole pavilion is dedicated to the frankincense tree? Just the first and, and last, floor. last floor. As you yeah. can see, the, the uh, sorry, the first, the ground and the last, yeah. the first floor is all about sustainability and the projects, so this is, this is just to create a green space. It's not real. <laughs> okay, so we are we try to give the visitors an experience as they're leaving to have a scent of the frankincense and all all the different types of the frankincense. And here we have pure frankincense, where the visitors come and stand around this hub and smell the frankincense with the sound in the background and it's, a, it's meant to help them relax. And on the ceiling we have the frankincense crystallized and the middle vacuum to recycle the scent. Okay. Over here we have holograms, these are 3D that show you how the, uh, the frankincense looks and the tree and the element that we use to burn it. and the object that we use to burn it, so you can cut that. Okay, so each of these have a s smell, basically. Nice. So that one has lemon, frankincense with lemon, and this is frankincense with roses. Do you want me to cover that, or we yeah. already did that? Yeah? yeah we can. Okay. Yeah. So over here we have frankincense with diffused lemon and it has a very light but a, a type of punch to it because of the lemon. So the visitors are able to experience the smell of it. And the last but not least is frankincense with rose. So the visitors can stand and feel a vibration under their feet with the sound in the background and it helps them relax and just, you know, before they leave the, the pavilion, they're relaxed and uh, ready to go to the next pavilion. It's uh, one of the most important things is to manage uh, to not have stress, right? Exactly. Relax yes. and to enjoy life slowly. Yes. Right? It helps you to relax and enjoy and also leave with a lovely scent and a lovely smell. And towards the end of the pavilion, we have these uh, uh, images that you are able to have an idea. Basically, all the information that you were seeing from the ground floor all the way to the last floor in detail. It talks about all the projects and everything about the pavilion. So now we have a uh, shop. Right. Do you want to go to the yeah. shop? We'll check it out Do you want to take the stairs? Yeah. So we're going down to the boutique Are those, uh, and to the astronauts exit. on the. Yes, they uh, are. So Oman has a 
has a vision of uh, going to Mars. They do. They have a vision to go to Mars, to launch in Mars and uh, try to plant the tree. Since it grows in really difficult climate, they're hoping that this will also help and we could have a future there one day. Fingers crossed. And uh, I'm guessing maybe the youth in Oman also uh, dreams to be astronauts? Yes, it's, uh, they're, they're very encouraged. And um, the youth right now is very much encouraged by doing so much change, especially after COVID came through. Everyone was able to think of what they would like to do and how to change the situation of planet Earth and how to better it. You have a pass your passport? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You wanna okay. he'll come okay. back. Or you wanna do yeah. it now? Oh. Let's grab it. Oh nice. That's what it looks so like. So as the visitors are leaving? Uh, are every people uh, welcome to Oman to travel? Yes they are. Oman is open to everyone. So uh, uh, visa on arrival for... No, for certain countries there's visa on arrival, but for s others you have to go through your embassy or you can get it online as well, okay? Right. So here we have um, the shop. Actually, I didn't, I didn't mention this yeah. invest. Okay, okay so we, we don't only allow guests to just come and visit the pavilion, but we also, we also give people a chance to um, invest in the country if they have any opportunities that they would like to study in the country there's all sorts of information for everyone okay and, uh, uh, people can also uh, study yeah, in exactly. Oman yeah you can also study in Oman from any country from any country in English in English or in Arabic there's universities for both okay ah. so this is the investment office so we can encourage more business partners and relationships. And here we have the shop where we get to showcase our tradition and culture. And this is the Omani, one of the Omani attires. Okay. And here we are welcomed by all sorts of fragrances and frankincense. I will show you a bit of the frankincense. This is how it looks. There's very nice smell here. Um, it's from the perfumes yeah, that are around. Yeah. And each and every product that is in here has been made by an Omani. So it's all local, local made. And it, all, the, um, all the benefits are going back to the locals as well. So we have chocolate that is made from Oman and perfume what, and, what and mist. It would be a, a typical or recommended uh, Omani perfume that, I, that uh, people should definitely think about. There's so much or? There is so much, but there's a famous brand that everyone knows about and it's called Amouage. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure yeah. everyone is familiar with it. Where is it? Yeah. 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 Oh, here. There. Okay, so everyone that knows of Oman knows of this perfume or might know of the perfume but not know that it's from Oman. So this is a, a must-have. It smells really good. They have unisex um, products and female and also male products and they all have like uh, the frankincense and also the incense infused in it. And we have different oils as well that um, have frankincense as well and others that don't have and here you have um, different examples of the jewelry that is worn in Oman by Omanis and this is all locally made anything else anything else I don't my uh, Arabic is short. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, the hand cross we have. Okay. Henna as well. Where's the henna? Here, over there. Okay. And halwa. Okay. And honey. All right. So we also have the honey here, which uh, Oman is really famous for its honey. And we have henna. If you're familiar with henna, are you familiar with henna? It's uh, drawn on your on your the palm of your hand or the uh, surface of your hand, and it's like a decorative. You and know, it stays for a few days. It stays for a few days, and as you wash it off, as you wash it off, it comes off. Right. Yeah, and uh, we also have handcrafted um, products behind you. 
this is jewelry and this uh, is called a hanjar which the male wear around their waist not everybody wears it right no 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 just okay. on special occasions all right and traditional yeah traditional wear and this is what we use to burn the frankincense so you get a coal you, you light up the coal and you put it inside and then you place the frankincense on top and then you move around the house or if you want it on your clothing you just kind of push it towards you the the fume and that's it all right and people can grab a bag that says i love oman oh, yes. and and go around the, the expo yes all right Okay. And this is the way out. This is your way out, and before you leave, there's a tourism, um, there's a tourism hub, and anyone that is trying to travel or get any sort of information about Oman, yeah, yeah about Oman, or if they want to get any visas or any type of information about the country, you're able to come here. Assalamu alaikum. How are you all? Okay, so this so is. So there's uh, Oman Air with 50 destinations. That's yes. a lot. Yeah. Coming direct flights from Europe. From Europe, from... Yes. Europe, we have a yeah. flight from... Uh, maybe you can grab uh, the microphone. I'll oh, be careful, don't you take it off so it doesn't damage your scarf, yeah? Okay, maybe you can, you can put it right here. This one? Yeah, and this, this in the pocket, this yeah. one, yeah. Okay, All right. Hi. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Do you want to say hi or... Okay. Hi. Let's, let's, okay, what's... Can I hear your sound, sorry? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, one second. Maybe lower your mask. Ah, okay. Ah, do you, do you want to take it off or? Oh, okay. okay. I can take it off. Yeah. No, thank you. I think that's better. One second. Uh, we are operating to 50, 51, 52 destinations at the moment. Some of the destinations are not resumed yet after the pandemic. But yes, we do have a flights to Europe, Far East, Indian subcontinent and some destinations in um, GCC and Middle East. Is uh, Oman uh, kind of like a hub for people to travel from Europe and then further away, a little bit like what Dubai does and, and Doha, or uh, is it the end destination is to come to Oman, most of the flights? Most of the flights, like we do have a flight to London, Munich, Zurich, Paris, Milan. Um, these are the destinations we, have, we are in Europe. And if someone wants to come to Dubai, yes, the, our hub is in Muscat. The flight will be transit flights to the Muscat, yeah. So it's like just like a couple of hours stop over in the in the Muscat, and our most of the operation for Europe is with the Dreamliners, which is one of the very good product and uh, in the aviation industry very comfortable. Very s uh, smooth flight. Very smooth, and we have a complete flat bed, 180 degree in a business class, and we have won several awards for the business class and economy class. All right. So. Um, and also maybe it's a very popular for Omanis to go around the world, so take the flight everywhere. Exactly, but yes. Means and uh, especially in the summer when they want to get maybe uh, some, some uh, little bit uh, cooler temperatures and they might want to go to Scandinavia or something. Scandinavian countries, yes, we don't, we, we, Oman here doesn't have a flight to Scandinavian countries or Atlantic Pacific, uh, we haven't started yet. But yes, we do have a code share partners with like a QR and um, Turkish airline and some um, some other European airlines. We d we do have a partnerships with them. So uh, it, it's just like a you know means if someone wants to go to let's say Muscat to um, some Scandinavian countries, they can go to Muscat to Muscat to Zurich or Germany with Oman Air like a Frankfurt, and then they can take a then they can take a Lufthansa from there. Like as I said, you know we do have a. Uh, code share partner partners with the water and uh, other uh, affordable economy uh, deals people um, can book Oman Air normally fares are very very competitive and uh, yes means uh, uh, the fares are always good means you will see all Oman Air is always in line with the competition 